Hello. For tonight's Grizzly Tale, I'm going to read you a story from Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called The Barber of Sid. You will probably have heard of a town called Saucy by Sea. The children who lived in the town had a terrible reputation. They were the rudest children in the world. Parents were often to be seen crying in the streets as their sons and daughters shouted abuse at them. It was an appalling sight that made visitors to the town shudder with horror and nobody knew what to do about it. One day, a new shop appeared in the high street. The sign outside said Barber. Then in small letters underneath, Children, a speciality. The window was permanently steamed up so that nobody could see in from the street. Little drops of water ran down a neat handwritten notice hanging in the door. Three cuts, short back and sides, pudding basin, or the full chop. The barber was a cheerful looking man with a handlebar moustache and bright red cheeks. He visited the local schools and offered free haircuts to all the children. He very quickly became popular. Th this was not because he was a particularly good barber. In fact, many of the parents noticed that their children's hair was exactly the same length when they came out as it was when they went in. But because the foul children of Saucy by Sea miraculously changed whenever they visited his shop, they would go in cheeky and rude and come out as polite as polite could be. However, there were two things about the new barber that people considered strange. Firstly, he never allowed parents into his shop. Children had to go in alone. Secondly, he had a very nasty collection of grey slugs, which he kept in a large glass jar by the cash till. But seeing as he provided such an excellent service, the parents of Saucy by Sea were happy to allow him these two eccentricities. A new family moved into the town. The two children, Tanya and Peregrine, started at the local school in the autumn, and it soon became clear that they were not fitting in. Uh, can anyone tell me what two and two is? said Peregrine's math teacher. Two, two, shouted Peregrine without putting his hand up. It's what a ballerina wears, isn't it? A two, two. Put your hand up when you have something sensible to say, Peregrine, said the teacher. Peregrine put his hand up. Jingle bells, teacher smells, I wish she'd go away. She looks just like an elephant, I've nothing more to say. There was a gasp from the class, and nobody would dare to be so cheeky to a teacher. Peregrine sat back in his chair and grinned. The teacher was bright red, it was all she could do to control her fury. Go and see the headmaster, she said slowly. Now! Tanya, meanwhile, was doing gym. Tuck your skirt into your knickers yourself, she shouted at her games teacher. I'm not doing it. Tanya, I am not going to argue with you. Everyone does gym in their knickers. Not me, Tanya said. I've got a note from my mum. Let me see it then, said the games teacher. All right, said Tanya defiantly. Then she jumped on top of a bench opened her mouth and sang in her loudest voice, La! There was a stunned silence from the rest of the class. Tanya jumped down off the bench. It's our musical note. My mum's always singing it. <laughs> the games teacher took a deep breath. Go and see the headmaster, she said slowly. Now! The headmaster was an old man who had been in the teaching business all his life. 
He knew exactly how to deal with cheeky children. Leave them outside his office for a while until they were really scared. Then call them in with a voice like thunder. Stand them in front of his desk while he faced the window, flexing a long bamboo cane in his hands. Then turn and confront the offenders. Crack the cane down on the desk in front of them and roar, Well, what have you got to say for yourselves? It always worked. The children were always deeply ashamed about their behaviour and always said sorry. Tanya and Peregrine had been waiting in the corridor for about ten minutes when the headmaster called them in. He was standing by the window playing with a large stick. They stood by his desk waiting for him to say something. Then suddenly he turned round and thumped the stick down on the desk in front of them. Well, boomed the headmaster. What have you got to say for yourselves? Tanya and Peregrine looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders. Then they started singing. We're not scared of your stupid old stick. If you really want to know, you make us sick, because you look like a camel with a hairy hump. You're a ninny, you're a twit, you're a great fat lump. There was a dull thud as the headmaster collapsed behind his desk. Tanya and Peregrine waited. A hand appeared over the telephone, then a white face. Could you get Matron, please? murmured the headmaster, for whom the song had obviously been a big shock. Then kindly leave my office. The next day was Friday. Friday was the day that the barber came to the school to find new customers. The first class he visited was Peregrine's. Good morning, class, said the barber. Good morning, sir, replied everyone except Peregrine. The barber put on his spectacles and stared at him. Don't you want to say good morning to me, said the barber. No, said Peregrine rudely. I'd rather say goodbye. The barber chuckled. You look like you need a haircut, young man. Come and see me tomorrow morning. Then he took out a pencil and wrote, short back and sides in a little black book. The barber entered Tanya's class just as she was flicking ink pellets at the teacher who had her back turned and was writing French words on the blackboard. The class stood up when the barber came in. Tanya went one further. She stood on top of her desk, stuck her tongue out and waggled her fingers in her ears. The barber took out his little black book. And what might your name be, he said to Tanya. Well, it might be Queen Elizabeth I or Madonna, but it isn't, she replied. It's Tanya Windsor, said the teacher. The barber wrote the name down. Tanya, he said. I think you need a haircut as well. Come to my shop tomorrow morning with Peregrine, and I'll see what I can do for you. The following morning, Tanya and Peregrine turned up at the barber's shop for their haircuts. A bell rang in the distance as they pushed open the door. They were in a small room with shiny red lino on the floor. In the middle stood a large black and chrome dentist's chair, underneath a bright overhead light. A bag of steel instruments sat on a shelf to the left of the chair, and a black cat lay asleep next to it. Strangely, there were no mirrors. Perhaps the barber didn't want his customers to see what he was doing. Oh, he's not here, said Tanya. He's forgotten we're coming. Peregrine sidled up to the cash till. Look at these, he shouted, lifting the barber's collection of grey slugs down off the counter. No, oh, imagine putting one of those in your mouth, squealed Tanya. Oh no, oh no, Peregrine, no, don't. Peregrine had unscrewed the lid of the jar, fished out a slug, and was pretending to eat it. I'll be sick, screamed Tanya. So will he, said a voice from the back of the shop. Peregrine got such a fright that he swallowed the slug he was playing with and dropped the jar on the floor. The glass smashed and a heaving, twisting ball of slimy grey slugs spilled out onto the floor. As they slithered around Tanya's feet, she heard a hundred different voices shout out, Shant! 
Don't do it. Don't care. And I hate you too. Get them off me, she shrieked. The barber bent down, scooped up the chattering slugs and squeezed them into his pocket. You shouldn't play with other people's property, he said. Yeah, well, you shouldn't leave them where I can reach them, replied Peregrine cheekily. You think you're really clever, don't you, said the barber. Well, you're certainly not, said Peregrine, otherwise your best friends wouldn't be slugs. The barber laughed. <laughs> Those aren't slugs. Yes, they are, said Tanya. Aren't they? The barber said nothing. Well, if they're not slugs, what are they then? The barber simply smiled and locked the door. Now we won't be disturbed, he said. He tied a small plastic bib around each of their necks and went over to his tool bag. Peregrine and Tanya watched him closely as he took out a silver razor. He ran his tongue down the edge of the blade to test how sharp it was. A thin red line of blood appeared on his tongue, which he promptly swallowed. The children were more than a little frightened. Nobody had ever cut their hair with a razor blade before. Who wants to be first? he asked, taking out his little black book. Peregrine? with your short back and sides or Tanya I have you down for the full chop but I don't want all my hair chopped off she said we'll start with Peregrine then up you come the barber helped Peregrine into the black and chrome dentist chair he pressed a lever and the chair flattened out so that Peregrine was lying on his back looking up into the overhead light the barber tied two leather straps around Peregrine's wrists. Now open wide, he said. Tanya screamed. Stop! You're not a dentist. Why should he open his mouth? You cut people's hair. Whatever gave you that idea, he laughed. I teach little children to keep a civil tongue in their heads. What do you cut then? asked Tanya nervously. I'll give you one guess, said the barber sticking his tongue out at her. Peregrine gasped. So those aren't slugs in your pocket? No, of course not, shouted the barber. They're children's tongues. The little bits of children's tongues that make you all so foul-mouthed. I snip out the rudeness. I trim off the cheekiness. I cut away the bad language. And when I've finished, I rinse your mouths out with soap and water. When Tanya and Peregrine went back to school on Monday, they were different children. Their tongues were shorter for one. Also, they didn't swear, they weren't cheeky, and they didn't try to be clever in front of the rest of the class. In fact, they were two of the politest children in a school with a growing reputation for being the politest school in the world. The barber left Saucy by Sea that week and was never seen again. He went off in search of other children in other towns. So if a new barber arrives at your school and his pockets are bulging with slugs, I suggest you keep your mouth firmly shut and only speak when you're spoken to. <laughs>